Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's edition of Hashtag GSE at Home. My name is Veronica. I'm one of the astronomers at the Planetarium at Glasgow Science Centre, and joining me is the wonderful <laughs> Natalie. Hello. Hi, Natalie. I'm also an astronomer in the Planetarium as well. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And now, what we're going to do this morning. Now, you might have seen a little alert earlier telling you that um, you might need some stuff to start our wonderful program, we're going to be making our very own planet from our imagination, but you'll need some stuff to do that. The first thing you'll need is a piece of paper. Have you got your piece of paper, Natalie? Yep. She I'm has ready. it, yay! We've got our pieces of paper. Um, secondly, we're gonna need um, something to draw our wonderful planet with. We've got all of these lovely colors, lots, lots to choose colors, from. Yeah. And then we need something to make a circle shape with. What we're going to use is just the bottom of this pencil holder. Yeah. Pretty cool. I might freehand it. We'll see. You're going to freehand it? Yeah, I think I want quite a big planet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, brave. <laughs> um, so, let's get started. But, how do we... What makes a planet a planet? Well, you've got to follow three rules to be a planet. We have eight planets in our solar system, but we also have dwarf planets. So, we have to think about what actually does make a planet a planet. You've got to follow three rules, okay? Rule number one, you've got to be going around something, okay? Something in our solar system. Do you know what it could be? Is it a star? It is a star, the sun. So, you have to be going around the sun to be a planet. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a star in the background. That's a good so idea. My planet is definitely going around a star. Okay. Okay. Luckily, all of our planets do that. That's why they're planets. But our dwarf planets also go around the sun as well. So, you've got to follow some other rules too. Number two is that you have to be big enough to pull yourself into a nice round ball. We call this hydrostatic equilibrium Ooh, in science. That's a fancy word. And you've got to make sure you're big enough to be in a nice ball shape. So that is where we need to draw our circles, okay? So okay. you're gonna make yours very symmetrical. Yeah, I and you're gonna freehand it. <laughs> I want quite a big planet, I think. This Are you doing yours really at home? home? So see if you wanna get a stencil like Veronica or if you, if want you to feel confident it. in your abilities you can freehand it. I'm loving this confidence though. Oh my pen doesn't even work. Does do it not? Yeah I'll take this one. Okay. Okay. You know coming. maybe maybe this is a sign that I shouldn't be freehanding it. <laughs> I believe in you. Okay. Now make sure if you're doing this at home um, to... <gasps> that is actually really impressive. <laughs> Look at yours. Oh, uh, mine's is much smaller than yours. So our planets they look like they're in hydrostatic equilibrium to me. They look pretty round. That's pretty good but if you maybe even had a look and Googled Pluto, one of our dwarf planets, you would see that is pretty round as well. So it does actually pass rule number two. So what is rule number three? Rule number three is that you have to be the boss of your orbit. You've got to be what we call gravitationally dominant. You have to have cleared a path out of your way. <laughs> and all of our eight planets have done that. They've made quite clear paths. Sometimes Jupiter pulls things into its path because it is so massive, but we let it get away with it. But Pluto lives in a place called the Kuiper Belt, and lots of things live in the Kuiper Belt, things like comets. So there are lots of things out there. It hasn't cleared them all away, so it's not gravitationally dominant. So it does not pass the third rule, so it is a dwarf planet. There's also a dwarf planet called Ceres, and that lives in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And so it also hasn't cleared its path because it lives in the asteroid belt, so it's a dwarf planet as well. There's three more. There's Haumea, there's Maki Maki, and there's Eris. So those are the dwarf planets. Those three plus Ceres and Pluto. Pretty cool. So I'm just going to make sure I'm not going to draw any other stuff where my planet is. We'll maybe add some moons later. Yeah, all the fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, all of that cool stuff. But I'm going to make sure I'm not in the middle of an asteroid belt in anywhere where there's lots of comets or anything. I'm going to keep it pretty clean for now. So we've got our planet, but the thing yeah. is, um, I definitely, definitely want to have life on my planet. I, I don't want, I, yeah. other planets are pretty cool, but I think the Earth is the coolest because we have life. So well, I need to make sure that I've got all the things that life needs. So what are the things that life would need? Well, it's funny that you should ask that, <laughs> Natalie, <laughs> because I have the answer, isn't that amazing? Um, so you need a few things for life to exist on the surface of our planet. Well, that's what we think so far, because the only example of life that we have is, as you said before, the only example we have is us on our planet, our planet of Earth. Um, and we've discovered that life can exist in pretty strange environments, pretty extreme environments as well. But the number one thing that we've found for all of these environments that have in common is water. 
liquid water. So you need liquid water on the surface of your planet. Mm, they look for blue then. Yeah, so we need some blue. Okay, we've only got one blue, we've got to take it in <gasps> We're going to have to share. Well, you draw I'll yours start. and I'll talk. Right. So we need water on the surface. So you don't have to put water in yours. If you don't want life on the surface of your planet, you can do it any color that you wish. We're going to do some lovely, that's a beautiful ocean there. Excellent. Thank you. Now, all of this liquid water on the surface has to remain pretty much liquid. The smallest droplet of water and you might have life. Now, in order for all of that liquid water to exist on the surface of a planet, it has to be in a pretty specific area around our star or our sun. Now, if you were a lot closer to the sun, if our planet Earth was a lot closer to the sun, it would get really, really hot and all of that water would dry up. If we're a lot further away from the sun, it would get really cold and all of that water would freeze. So we're in an area that's not too hot, not too cold, but just right. Just like, like baby bear's porridge. Ah, <laughs> it's just like baby bear's porridge. It's called the Goldilocks zone or the habitable zone. And that's where we live. An area that's not too hot, not too cold, but just right for liquid water. Now, the second thing you need is, well, life gets not just thirsty, it gets a little bit hungry as well. So you need an energy source. You need some minerals. You need stuff that the life can feed on to get all of those nutrients and all of that lovely healthy food to be able to sustain itself. So it needs an energy source. It can come in all different shapes and forms and um, even from sulfur and iron all the way up to broccoli. Can you imagine? <laughs> you could eat lots and lots of wonderful energy sources. And the third thing is, well, you need the stuff to build life. Now, the fancy schmancy term for this is hydrocarbons, organic oh. molecules. But basically, that just means the stuff that we are made of, us. We are made of organic molecules. It's sort of like all the ingredients for life. If you have them all separate, it's sort of like the ingredients for cake. And if you mix them all together, pop them in the oven, cook them at the right temperature, and you could have yourself a big cake, just like life. Now let me see how you're getting on. So well, you've added some blue. Well, yeah, I've got the blue for the water and then you okay. said broccoli. I like the sound of that. So All right, I like broccoli. broccoli. So let's see, show the camera. This is so what I'm at so far. All right. But I, I think I <gasps> There's want to another make it blue! Different. No, that was the blue I used before. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm going to have some broccoli, but like, I think I want to change things up. I think I okay. am going to have some purple trees. Purple yeah, trees? I'm thinking forests of purple trees. Well, excellent, because yes. you don't have to follow the rules um, for whatever the color of your planet is. You can make it any color that you want. You don't have to have water on it. It could be that the water has been tinged a different color because of the different gases in the atmosphere or the different ingredients in the water. Maybe there's water there, but you just can't see it. Maybe it's an entirely pink atmosphere because the pink surface, because the atmosphere really thick it could be lots and lots of reasons mine is very blue look at this yeah mine is very so we blue. definitely want to keep the water on our planet okay. if we want life okay yeah. so it also needs to be able to protect itself from other things out in space because in our solar system our sun actually sends out lots of particles into space we call it the solar wind and it's actually been able to take away the atmospheres of other planets and we need an atmosphere to keep our water in like a nice blanket it protects us it keeps it all nice and nice and snug so that we can have our liquid water Water. But the sun's rays, they take the solar wind and they can take the atmospheres away. But luckily on our planet, we have a magnetic field, okay? Because this means that the particles, instead of them getting swept away our atmosphere by the solar wind, those particles get drawn towards our poles and they actually light up the nitrogen and the oxygen in our atmosphere. And that is where we get our northern and our southern lights from. So they're really, really pretty as well as it being very, very useful. So I'm going to make sure I've got a magnetic field. Am I going to draw on my magnetic field? I might try and draw on a little magnetic field. That's or maybe, pretty cool. Maybe just an N for north and an S for south, I think. Yeah, put on your good. poles. And well, I'm gonna, I am making... I'm um, going to draw a bit of an atmosphere as well to make sure I've got that atmosphere. Oh, so what kind of stuff would you find in an atmosphere? 
Well, what we really want to look for most of the time is oxygen. We have lots of oxygen on our planet Earth, and oxygen is a really good sign because in atmospheres, for oxygen to be there, it usually means it has to be replenished. It means it's got to be something creating that oxygen. And here on our planet Earth, we have lots of trees that create oxygen that we can use to breathe. So oxygen is a really, really good sign. But the thing is, is it's not just about, when we're looking for aliens out there, which I really, really want to do, we need to be able to look for these things in the atmospheres. So how do we actually look for things like oxygen in atmospheres? Well, the way that we do that is we can look at the light that the... Um, so there is something... Oh, you're better at explaining this. <laughs> So we can actually like use something <laughs> called spectroscopy. There you go. Yes, we can use spectroscopy. So when we look at the light coming from planets, then they actually have a kind of very specific barcode, just like how you go to the shops and your shopping might have a barcode on it and it scans it and you know what it's going to be. It's kind of just like that. We can look at the light from planets. We can split up that light into an entire rainbow. And when we look at that rainbow, there are sometimes parts of the rainbow missing, just there like a barcode. And by looking at that barcode, it can tell us what elements are in the atmospheres. Now, our telescopes aren't that good so far. We aren't able to look into the atmospheres of planets going around far away stars, but I'm pretty excited because there's going to be some new telescopes coming up. The Webb telescope yes. is going to be going up in a few years, that's and we think cool. that that's going to be strong enough to look into the atmospheres of other planets, um, which I'm super excited about. I'm hoping we'll find oxygen. If we find oxygen, it means there may be something replenishing that oxygen. There's other things as well. Um, we think that methane is really maybe a good sign that there could be life on a planet because most of the methane that comes from our planet Earth comes from life. Um, do you know where methane's from, Veronica? Uh, I know one place that you get methane <laughs> from. Yeah. Cows produce most of it, some animals produce it, some more than others. Yes, so it does come from farts, <laughs> but it's not just that, there's also microbes. And yeah. microbes create most of the methane on our planet Earth. And there are actually other, um, not planets, but moons in our solar system that have methane. And we're pretty excited. Maybe um, they used to have water that created all of, that had life that created all of that methane. We don't know for sure. Um, a moon that has a lot of methane is a moon called Titan that goes around Saturn. And it's got lots and lots of methane. It's got rivers and oceans and sea and rain and clouds of methane. So maybe that methane was created by life. I, that is super exciting. We're sending a little really drone cool. in a few years and it's gonna have a look and see if it can find any um, evidence that ever was life, any maybe fossils, alien fossils. Really exciting. So I think I might have some methane. So I'm gonna have a little bit of an orange atmosphere. You're gonna have an orange yeah, atmosphere. Like I've got water at the top and then some vegetation and then I've got a lovely desert. In the desert. Middle. Yeah, in the middle, and then like that as well. <laughs> looks like an looking. eye. It does look a little bit like an eye. I didn't think about that See, when I was drawing you've it. Got a lot but of you just mentioned moons, and I think it's time to add some extra fun some stuff. I'm going to add a moon and some rings around the planet. You're going to do one moon. I'm going to do one moon, and then I'm going to make it a little bit like our moon with like lots of craters and stuff on it, and I'm going to do some rings around the planet. That's interesting actually because the moon, it goes around our planet Earth and mm -hmm. we are in the Goldilocks zone, yeah. right? Um, so that means that the moon is also in the Goldilocks zone as well. So why doesn't that have life? I think it's a really interesting well, question. There isn't liquid water on the surface of the moon. The moon isn't big enough to hold on to any sort of atmosphere. It doesn't have any atmosphere on it whatsoever. That's why um, it's got a teeny tiny bit. Teeny but... tiny teeny tiny bit to yeah, be specific enough. about it, but not enough to really hold on to all of that water. That's when when you look up to the moon and you see all of those lumps and bumps and bruises on it. Um, that is those craters. Um, they are created by meteorites or shooting stars crashing into the surface and leaving those lumps and bumps behind. Um, so when you see that here on Earth, we don't have a lot of that because we've got our atmosphere. And our atmosphere has weather, it has um, lots of rain going down on it and churning up all of the ground and all of that surface to be able to get rid and smooth away all of those craters. So it doesn't have an atmosphere to hold on to all the water. 
Mm. Now, we actually said that water is the number one thing we think we need to like, mm -hmm. and we don't just find liquid water on Earth. There is liquid water on other, well, not planets. We don't think that there are moons that have liquid water. In fact, there is a moon going around Saturn called Enceladus, and also a moon going around Jupiter called Europa. And we think both of those moons have liquid water underneath the surface. So maybe they have life. That would be really, really exciting. I've added a ring. You've got a ring? What color is it? It's green. That's pretty cool. I think, you know, I don't think I'm going to have a ring around You're not going to put a ring in No, but I'm going to have quite a few moons. Oh, right, okay. How many moons are you going to have, I'm thinking three. You can have as many moons as you like. And I'm thinking one of them might even have life as well. <gasps> yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. That so will be pretty cool. That's what I'm going to do. And you know what, I'm going to add some more green. I think I need I'm going to add some craters forest. to my little moon. Have you got a good name for your planet yet? Um, no. Have you got any good names for your planets? Maybe pop your names down below. I think I'm going to call mine Athena. Oh, you were going to call your plant Athena earlier on today. You oh, got a new plant. I did get a new plant. I, I think Athena, because our planets in our solar system are named after Roman and Greek gods. And Athena was the god of wisdom. And that, I think, is what we're all about here at Science Centre. Yeah. Learning new things. So I'm going to go with Athena. I think that's a good name. But it doesn't have to be a god. You could just call it something silly. Veronica's um, definitely going to call it something I'll silly. I win! I think you probably will. I'm going to call it... Um, fudge. Fudge. I told you. So, what <laughs> elements are in your atmosphere? Are you going to have oxygen? I'm going to have oxygen in my atmosphere, nitrogen. It's going to be pretty much like Earth, but it's going to be a lot hotter. I want it to be a tropical oh, yeah? paradise. Yeah, that's why there's desert. So, this is what I've got. It's going to be one great big desert, and it's just going to be all beaches, and it's going to be really warm all the time, and it's going to be a tropical paradise. And then when you look up into the sky, there's going to be a big ring, just like Saturn. See, I think mine is going to be a very rainy planet. All right, we're in Glasgow, so I am used to the rain, so I'm thinking I'm going to keep it quite rainy. All right. But like nice and rainy. <laughs> I quite like the rain. Well, you look almost done. Is that yours? Yeah, I'm just adding some moons. Is that a moon there? Well, I am yeah. done. You done? with mine. I've got my moon up there, I've got my lovely beach and tropical paradise and my beautiful I'm going to write my planet name at the top. You're going to write your yeah. planet name at the top. I'm going to write mine too. What did I call it again? Fudge. Fudge. I'm going to use yeah. brown for chocolate fudge. Um, one more moon. Full up, I think. Um, what colour? There's fudge. Go there you moon. go. So make sure to take pictures of your planet. Oh yeah, we definitely want to see your planets. Um, and like tag us in them or um, use that hashtag GSE at home. Let us see all of your wonderful planets as well. If you have any wonderful um, planet facts that you can use for you. Um, <laughs> you can hold yours up as well. Oh Let's yeah, see. I definitely want to show mine. Yeah. Comment do down below. Tell us which one is better. I think well. yours is better. Yeah, I think so You've well. got a better like. <laughs> well, I have better rings. Well, both of them are pretty yeah. cool. Definitely show us your planets and tell us if yours have life on it, if they have the three things, what elements have you got in your atmosphere, have you got water, all of that fun stuff. Let us know. And if you've got any questions at all, you can always tweet us. We have a Twitter. It's at GSC Planetarium. Mm -hmm. And you can tweet us any questions, any pictures, show us your planets and anything at all about space. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us here and listening to us ramble on and have a lot of fun. I hope you guys have had fun as well and learned a little bit um, and been drawing along with us. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.